Welcome back to the greenhouse and if you're new here, welcome. Every fall as the sunlight hours and the energy coming from it wanes and as the temperatures begin to drop, we had 31 degrees overnight, frost and ice outside. Every fall for the past years, we've been doing some cool experimenting with free heating and using compost to achieve heat into this greenhouse along with geothermal and many other free heating options. But today what we're doing is building our Jean Payne compost heater. Now if that sounds interesting, please consider subscribing to the channel. I hear the tractor getting ready, so we're going to be dumping all of this. And I want to share some tips and tricks to getting that pile activated and how we're putting it all together. Now I just want to state that our channel can be kind of repetitious. We do a lot of the same stuff, but we we do experiment a lot and we modify things and we're always learning so hopefully everybody who goes and watches older videos can see the progression through the years from where we started to where we're at now and the experiments that we've achieved along the way. Now over the years we've started with maybe one or half ton piles and we've graduated all the way up to nine, ten ton piles. This year we should have ten plus tons of wood chips so we've really really graduated over the years to larger and larger piles with more and more heating needs. So on average, compost produces about 1,660 BTUs per hour when it's active, and that's per cubic yard of active compost. So per ton of compost, we should be producing about 6,400 BTU. So quickly mathing that, we could be sitting from 65,000 to 76, 77,000 BTUs per hour while it's active. Some of that will be designated for the crust. So I hear the tractor coming and with that crust, we have about maybe a ton or two on the whole outside of it. So we could go down to eight to nine tons. So we'd probably be putting about 50 some ish thousand BTUs to the greenhouse per hour through water and air. So let's go make our way outside. I wanna show what we're doing here. Got my son out there, we've got the tractor, maybe 12 tons of wood chips or so, and we've got this huge pile of compost. I added a lot of green to the top, but there's a lot of nitrogen inside this. So the tractor's ready to dump behind me. I've got to pull this off of our compost. We've got a nice little fence, wire fence around it. Same one we're gonna use for our compost heater. Now that we've got our wire ring off, we've got this compost pile that is just one solid lump. We've got a few cubic yards in that compost with lots of nitrogen in it. Heading over here, we're going to be dumping these wood chips. Just coming up real quick, I pulled all my softer metal off to the side. I kind of bent in the side where we're going to dump the wood chips in. I'm going to put you guys up on top of our watershed and we're going to get started. Now water is the most important factor to getting wood chips hot. They have nitrogen, they've got leaves in there. They're all chewed up together and they're a nice good mulch compost mix. So we're gonna be adding nitrogen. We've got little five gallon buckets with comfrey in them. They've been nitrogen inoculating basically or infusing nitrogen into water with our comfrey. And then we're gonna dump our compost pile on this pile after maybe one more scoop here. So here we have dumped all of our compost, nitrogen rich compost, lots of green, lots of semi broken down, lots of good stuff that's going to jumpstart this pile.
after 43 loads of wood chips and one and a half loads of compost, fresh compost that is active, we've got about 11 tons of material out there and that's going to allow for a good long burn. Now those fresh wood chips out there, they contain maybe 35 to 45 percent nitrogen and the older wood chips are going to be maybe 10 to 20 percent nitrogen to carbon ratio. So mixing old and new wood chips and hot compost allows us to get maybe 75 to 80 percent carbon to maybe 20 to 25 percent nitrogen and that is about our key ratio it depends on what materials if you have just straw and grass and stuff it's going to burn up a lot faster so you need a lot more dense material and a lot of it to create heat that's going to sustain through the winter the way i like to look at it is the carbon is the fuel or the fuel rod and then you're going to need your activator the nitrogen to react with that carbon and allow the heat production. Now ideally I would like to have this pile lower than my greenhouse to use the natural thermophilic draw of heat and cold. It's going to rise and lower so we can't really achieve that. We're on pretty flat ground so I always try and bowl out the basin of our compost pile to get it down lower where all our heat transfer systems are but we have to insulate them from the ground. And so we do the best we can with what we've got here and we've got a a lot of water still running in there. Now during this whole entire process I had the water flowing 100 maybe 200 gallons of water or whatever we put into these wood chips. The whole entire thing was coated. Every layer was coated and we just layered it up. All that hot compost that we dumped in the center of the pile is going to allow all of those good microbes and bacteria and fungi to be present currently so it's going to get a good jump start along with all of the nitrogen that we dump and we used our compost comfrey tea to inoculate nitrogen into the water or infuse the nitrogen in the water without a bubbler. We have our bubbler tied up on another system right now. So we used all of that nitrogen rich water. There's urea pellets we could use if we find that we need to. So I just want to cover everything that's going on as I can hear the tractor heading home here. We've got all of our water lines and this one back here that is already connected. This is our intake. So we've got air and two water lines and I've still got water flowing into this pile. This thing is freaking massive. So I've just been plugging this hose throughout and spreading water and I sprayed from far back the entire time so I could really really soak this pile. It's hard to give a perspective of how big this thing is but it is taller than the greenhouse. It's probably like nine foot tall here so there she is. So this should hold enough heat throughout this winter to be able to suffice our heating needs in the greenhouse here. All we've got left to do now, now that we've created our pile, all the systems are in place, we're creating heat, that compost and the wood chips, everything was already pretty darn active, and we've got rain coming the next couple days. So I'm gonna leave this thing uncovered to soak up all that rainwater. Now all we gotta do is set up some fans and some water pumps and then we can start actively heating this greenhouse with the compost and all of the air and water moving systems that we've put in place. So if anybody has any questions this is the biggest pile. I mean it's the biggest pile by at least a ton or two. So if anybody has any questions on anything we showed today there's going to be more coming on this process in this little mini series here. We can close the doors and then focus on all of the heat transfer and everything inside the greenhouse and getting situated and bunkered down for winter. I'd like to thank you guys for stopping by and checking out this video and seeing what we've got set up for this fall and this winter's heating. Now stay tuned as we get the air and water heating systems fully functional, get their operations going and power them up and we've got to get our windmill set up. We've got a lot of stuff to do out here so I'm going to get to work and I will see you guys next time.